Hi, and welcome to Watch This. I'm CJ Johnson. Thanks for joining me. I've got some Netflix picks for you to enjoy, some stuff that might have slipped under your radar. The first is a new feature-length documentary that's available on Netflix in Australia. I think it's actually a documentary that was produced for Showtime in the United States, but in Australia, it's Netflix-specific. It's called Operation Odessa, and it is as rollicking a documentary about heavy criminals as you get. I'm a wanderlust king. I distinctly remember arriving in Moscow and saying to myself, everything is for sale. They gave me the helicopter for $500. And the guy said, listen, let's get 10 of them. New history. It's trio of subjects, Ludwig Tarzan Feinberg, Juan Almeida and Nelson Tony Yesta are enormously entertaining and frequently very funny as they tell their remarkable story, which sounds literally like the setup to a joke. A Russian strip club owner, a black market car dealer, and a drug dealing killer try to sell a Russian military submarine to a Colombian drug cartel. The story is one of those jaw-dropping, head-spinning tales that could only have emerged from Miami in the 1980s and 90s, when Miami seemed essentially lawless. Tarzan's club, Porky's, which yes, he named after the teen movie Porky's, was a local hang for Russian gangsters. Naturally, as they made money, they wanted to spend it on all sorts of silly cars, which Juan Almeida furnished. Along the way, both of them met Tony, who hooked them up with the Colombians with whom they made deals. First for cars, then helicopters, and then, ambitiously, for a Russian Navy submarine. These guys are so utterly perfect in their roles, you'd swear the whole thing was a fake, but it's not. Tarzan couldn't be more Russian, sitting fatly, bearded, smoking, with a boyish gleam in his eye. Juan Almeida is smooth, relentlessly charming, born to sell a lump of coal to a chimney sweep. And Tony is an infinite mirror of Tony Montana from Scarface, a film this one so casually references that it assumes you've seen it. Like Al Pacino's Tony Montana from Scarface, this Tony, this real life Tony, Tony Yesta, came to Miami from Cuba in the Mario boat lift in 1980, very quickly figured out that drugs and violence were the way to get rich in America and proceeded to deal drugs and kill people. Like Al Pacino's Montana, he swears constantly, dresses sharp, and lets his more violent utterances trail off with a sly, scary smile. He's interviewed on a plane somewhere in Africa, a constant fugitive from the law and the Colombians for decades. It's impossible to figure whether he inspired Tony Montana or Tony Montana inspired him because really they both created each other and they echo each other in a perpetual loop. This is wild stuff. If you love the oeuvre of cocaine cowboy films, American made, cocaine cowboys, all of those films, you'll love this. In fact, you'll hoover it up. No doubt it will get remade as a scripted feature any minute. See this, the real deal first. I promise you there's no way any actors can make these guys more colorful than they actually are. I told them that I was looking for a submarine, man. They say, you got it, man. And he said, do we want the submarine with missiles or without missiles? That's Operation Odessa. It's available at the moment on Netflix Australia. A couple of other things available on Netflix worldwide at the moment. If you haven't checked out Wild Wild Country yet, go see it. It's amazing. I watched it ages ago. It's become a very popular thing. It's a six part documentary about a cult that established itself first in India and then moved lock, stock and barrel to Oregon in the 1980s. It's fabulously entertaining. I don't want to say anything else about it because as it goes on, the twists and turns of the story are just jaw-dropping. Check it out. Wild, wild country. Finally, I've got one more pick for you. Very specific. If, like me, you like Scandinavian dramas, then you'll like Fallot. It is a new half-hour spoof 
of the genre that is becoming known as Scandi Noir or Nordic Noir. If you've been watching, well, basically over the last 10 years or so, film and television coming out of Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, has become increasingly, dare I say it, a little formulaic unto itself. You get those very specific title sequences that are all a bit trippy and dark and letters fading in and out. You get this, that, the other. You get the darkness. You get the color palette. They have developed a kind of pattern and this show, Fallot, spoofs them perfectly. Check it out if you like those shows. You'll find it very, very funny. Plus, it's actually got its own specific story to boot. So it works simultaneously as a spoof and an example of the genre itself. So there you go. Operation Odessa, Wild Wild Country, and Fallot. These have been CJ's Netflix picks.